Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. I'd like to welcome you here today. And those of you who are watching by internet, we'd like to welcome you into our service today. That, Lord, you would show yourself strong. That today would be a, a new day. Amen. That today, Jesus would be magnified and lifted up. And His presence would be experienced. And lives would be changed. Amen. I believe that every time you come into the presence of the Lord, every time you allow the Lord to minister to you, Amen. That you could, that you are to leave that situation changed and closer to Him. Can you say Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning, if you would open your Bibles to Acts chapter three, we're going to look at two portions of Scripture this morning in Acts three and Acts four, and then we're going to camp there for the rest of the morning. So as I read, just follow along with me, if you would. Verse one. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. In other words, Peter sees the, the lame man, Acts chapter 3. He sees the lame man, and, 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 and when he sees him, he gets an unction. From the Holy Spirit. He gets a leading, we'll, we'll call it today. How many understand that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. That you have the right and the privilege to be led by the Holy Spirit. So Peter and John see the lame man at the gate, beautiful, and, and an unction rises up in them. An anointing rises up in them. And uh, verse 4, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, the, the, the lame man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Now let me say this, when it comes to the kingdom of God, you have a part. Amen? If you're going to receive from God, it's going to be because you are expecting to receive from God. Amen? How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So you hear what the Bible has to say on said subject. And you believe it. In other words, you expect it to, to, to manifest to take place in your life. Amen? In order to receive from God, church, you have to expect to receive. One of the very reasons so many people don't receive from God is because they don't expect anything to happen. They think that, well, if God's going to do it, God's just going to do it. It's going to all be on His end. And, and, and I have no part, no bearing on the matter. That's not true. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach that. You have to expect to receive. And here, Peter fastened his eyes on him and says, Look to us. And verse 5, He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now notice that Peter didn't pray for him. He spoke to him. He spoke with authority to him. Amen? And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Friend, this is the proper response when God does something in your life. Here's a gentleman who had been lame from his mother's womb. So not only is he now standing by the power of God, so much not so more notable to me is that he's leaping and he's walking. I mean, you watch Animal Kingdom and, and, and there's certain animals that just moments after being born, like horses and such, they have the ability to stand up and start walking. This man had been lame from his mother's womb. Now, I don't know about horses, but I do, I do know a little bit about kids. And kids, you've got to carry them jokers around for a year or so. Sometimes two. Sometimes they still want to be four or five and want to be carried. Be 30 and want to be carried around. Y'all hear what I'm saying this morning. Be 30 years old, you still carry them. <laughs> But this guy never walked and received strength and jumps and leaps and praising God. Glory to God. And all the people, verse 9, saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Oh, church, that, that, that's what we need in the body of Christ today. More people that come to church are more people that see the acts and the works of God. And it fills them with awe. It fills them with wonder. <laughs> Glory to God. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people... Now, I've had, I must stop here. This guy had been lame from his mother's womb. Peter and John lay hands on him in the name of Jesus. He jumps up. He's leaping and praising, walking, never done any of this stuff before. And then he sees the two guys, amen, that lifted him up. 
He don't know. He don't know what he don't know about Jesus. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He, he sees the two guys and he just goes and gives them a big old bear hug. Won't let go. You know what I'm saying? He ain't letting go. He just, he just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how to thank you. I don't know how to thank you. I can just see they held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life. Whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are all witnesses. And this, and His name, through faith in His name, has made this man strong, uh, whom you see and know ye. The faith which is by Him hath given Him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did it, so uh, did also your rulers. But these things which God before has showed by the mouth of all His prophets, that Christ should suffer, He has so fulfilled. Verse 19, repent! Ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but last week the Lord spoke to us in a special way uh, on this matter of repentance. And I'm telling you, before there can ever be a conversion, there has to be a repentance. In other words, there, without no change, there is no repentance. There's always going to be change. No repentance, no conversion, no change then nothing happened. Y'all with me? Glory to God. Notice what they were repenting of or repenting for. Verse 13, verse 14, for denying Jesus. They were told to repent for denying Jesus. Jesus said in John 16, uh, I think verse 9, He said that when the Holy Ghost come, He would reprove or He would convince the world of sin because they believed not on Him. They were repenting for denying Jesus. We just want to pick up the story here in chapter 4. Let me read a little, a little bit more then we'll, then we'll stop. And as they spake, of verse 1, chapter 4, unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temples and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it is now eventide. In other words, uh, understand in hold means they threw them in jail. They put them in the cooler, in the clink, whatever you want to call it this morning. Okay, the big house. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men of, uh, was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Ananias the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This, verse 11, is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. In other words, he dropped the mic right then, right? End of discussion. <laughs> Peter just, boom. Nothing else needed to be said. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned, and ignorant men, they marveled. And look closely at this last line. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What was it that the Bible said that made Peter and John stand out? What, what did we just read? They had been with Jesus. What is it that the Jews, the rulers of the synagogue, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the high priests, what was it that stood out? They had been with Jesus. I'm talking about Peter now. The same Peter who just 
just a few weeks prior, had denied, on the night of the crucifixion, on the, on, on the day of the crucifixion, denied Christ. Said, I don't know the man. The Bible says in one place, cursed about the situation. No, I don't know him. But here's the same Peter speaking with boldness, speaking with authority, church, full of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that what Jesus said? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. How be it when the Holy Ghost uh, is come, uh, He'll give you uh, power to be a witness. He's speaking with great boldness. He's full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He was reminding them of somebody they had just assumed had forgotten of. He was reminding them of somebody who they had heard speak just like this before. Okay? These were the same Jewish leaders that Jesus, Jesus had spoke to, had stood before, preached to. That Jesus, that fanatic who, yeah, they got rid of Him, but yet here's some people sounding just like Him. Doing the same things He was doing. Here's some guys acting like He acted. Doing miracles like He did miracles. Talking just like He talked. And, and, and they noted that they, they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Stories told of some missionaries who went to a, a part of China that, 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 that they thought was unevangelized. And they told them the gospel story. And they told them about Jesus. And, and when they got done, they asked them if they'd like, they asked them, they, if they, they gave the invitation, would you like to meet Jesus? And they said, oh, we already know him. Because there had already been a missionary come to their, to their town, to their village prior. And he acted like Jesus. He spoke like Jesus. I would to God that the testimony about Tommy Howard, when people met him and ran into him and got to know him even, would be, he acts like Jesus. They had been with Jesus. How many know, <laughs> Mama always wanted to know where you was going and who you was hanging with. <laughs> Why? Because we tend, we tend, we have, we have the capacity of acting like those we hang around. You know, no big secret, I was a, I was a dope smoker, you know, from the time I could get it to the time I got born again. And, and the people who hung around me, they were dope smokers. That's, that's what I did, that's what they did. That, that's the type of, that was, that was my group. That was, that was the people I, I hung out with. I never was much of a drinker until I hung out with those who drank. Then I stepped up my drinking game. You know, I always got along with most everybody. I, I was high. I was funny. I was laughing. I wasn't trying to fight. <laughs> I never got into a whole lot of fights growing up, you know. It wasn't that I wasn't capable. I was a big guy, athletic and all that. But I just never got into a whole bunch of fights. It wasn't my thing. Until I started hanging out with those who got in fights. And then I started getting in fights. Now, those are some, ne some negative aspects, but help me understand this works exactly the same way in the positive aspect. You start hanging around with people who love the Lord. You start hanging around with people who believe God can heal, who believe God can touch your situation, can turn your situation around. You know what? That'll bring you up. That'll bring you up. You hang around with people that it's all doom, gloom, uh, despair, agony on me. That'll bring you down. <coughs> and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And behold, the man, verse 14, which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. You know, one of the reasons people aren't turned on to Christianity like uh, perhaps we would like them to be uh, is because we don't have too many lame men standing alongside us who have just been healed. <laughs> Leaping and praising and like, 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 they sh like they should be. Amen? We're presenting a message and not, and not following it up with the demonstration. Remember Acts chapter 1 verse 1? The Bible said, uh, of all, Jesus began both to do and to teach. In other words, when Jesus taught something, He showed He did what He was teaching. How many of us we need that? We need the power, the demonstration, the supernatural uh, power of God moving in our lives. Amen. That's the dinner bell. That's the ring, ring, ring. Folk, you know, what happened here? Folks saw that guy. They knew he was lame from his mother's womb. And, he, and they saw what's going on here. Jesus, uh, Peter preaches the gospel and it says about 5,000 of them got saved that day. Glory to God. Just to finish up. And they called them and commanded them, verse 18, to not speak at all. No, I'll just wait till I get there. <laughs> Peter and John, I mean, just ordinary, average, uneducated folk as far as uh, religious uh, matters. You know, uh, 
What made them extraordinary or extraordinary is they had been with Jesus. Amen. Isn't it amazing how when you read the Bible that God just always seems to use just regular people? I said just regular folk. Just regular folk who trust a supernatural God. Glory to God. I mean, Moses is just a regular guy, really. With issues, as a matter of fact. He, he, if he pulled his, his shirt back, there'd be no, no big M on his chest for super Moses. Just, just Moses. But yet God uses him. What made them extraordinary is that they had been with Jesus this morning. I mean, this day in Acts... It's probably just like any other ordinary average day where two ordinary average guys are just going to, to minding their, their ordinary average business, going to church to pray. Amen. And when the lame man saw them, he looked at them and the Bible says he just was asking two ordinary average guys for stuff that ordinary average guys have. He looked at them and he wanted some change. Wanted some, wanted some money. Okay? But these guys had something extraordinary going on in their life. They had something extraordinary going on. They had been with Jesus. Amen? It's kind of like when you go to the movies and, and well, well, that's Clark Kent. But really, it's Superman. You know what I'm saying? Or, or that's, that's Bruce Banner. And, and anybody can pick on him. But really, there's a Hulk inside if you make him upset. And that's just the movies. This is real life. This, these are just two ordinary guys that have something extraordinary going on in their life. Amen? And so when the lame man looks at these two regular guys, he's not expecting nothing except what regular guys can give you. But hold on to your hat friend. They had something else. Silver and gold. We don't have any of that. But such as I have in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Woo! And he does. I mean, you may be here today and you may have some silver and gold in your pocket, but do you got some of that in your pocket? Do you got some of that operating in your life? Church, when you've been with Jesus, they may think you're ordinary, but there's something extraordinary about you on the inside of you. I told you last week about Smith Wigglesworth who said, he, he said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. In other words, he goes, there's a lot more to me than what you could just see. In other words, he believed what the Bible said about him so, so much, amen, that it changed the way he thought of himself. He believed that if God be for me, who can be against me? He believed that a thousand may fall at one side and ten thousand the other, but it's not coming nigh me. Amen. He believed when Jesus said, in my name you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He just believed it. He believed what the Bible said about him. Friend, when you believe what the Bible says about you, when you, when you take what the Bible says about you and you place it on the inside of you, it'll manifest on the outside. It'll change the outside of you. Glory to God. Your spirit man. Your inner, I'm going to tell you something right now. Your inner man right now. Your born again spirit man right now inside of you is ready. It's ready to, to, for you to open your mouth and say something like, In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, you be delivered, cousin. In Jesus' name, you be restored, nephew. It's ready to say things like that. Glory to God. There's more to you. Uh, be, be set free. Be healed. Be delivered. There's more to you than meets the eye. There was more to Peter and John than what people could see. They had been with Jesus. They weren't ordinary anymore. They, they had changed, amen. And all throughout the Bible, we find when people had been with Jesus, they were not the same anymore, friend. I'm reminded over in Luke chapter 8, there was a man, the Bible said, out of his mind, naked, running around, living in the graveyards. He was a cutter. He was crying out all night, but met Jesus. And the next thing you know, there he is clothed. I mean, the dude had a legion of demons, the Bible says. The next thing you know, after he meets Jesus, he's clothed and in his right mind. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Worshiping the Lord. There was a woman over in John chapter 4, a woman at a well. Before she met Jesus, well, probably the, the less said about her, the better. People didn't respect her. She didn't respect herself. But after she met the Lord, the whole town turns out to hear what she's been talking about. She had been with Jesus. In Acts chapter 9, a man named Saul was traveling down the Damascus Road persecuting Christians. He has a Jesus encounter and it changes everything about him. He goes from hating Jesus to being the greatest preacher that ever walked the face of the earth. He goes from 
persecuting Christians, amen, to becoming one. He goes from murdering uh, to be a martyr. Tradition holds it that the Apostle Paul was beheaded in Rome for his faith. Uh, a stingy tax collector one time, who was uh, the biggest thing on his mind was how much was he going to charge you today? Meets Jesus, and the next thing he's the next thing that comes out of his mouth is, "If I've ever done you wrong, I'll repay you sevenfold." Having been with Jesus, these people weren't the same. It should be like that for us too. Can you say Amen? amen. amen. Can I ask you this morning? Is there any indications in your life that you've been with Jesus? I mean, if, if you've been with Jesus, if you've made Him Lord and Savior of your life, if you've been spending time, in, 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 there, there, there ought to be some change in you, amen? The very idea that you can meet Jesus, amen, uh, accept Him as Lord and Savior, and it not affect your very life, your lifestyle, is completely foreign to what the Bible teaches. That you can meet Jesus and act just like you always acted before, the, the other way. That you, could, that you could accept Him as your Lord and Savior and nothing change. That's completely foreign to what the Bible teaches. I'm not saying it's impossible. Because folk do it. But it's not the, the presentation of the Gospel that we have. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If you've really been with Jesus... You won't have to tie a sign around your neck, a neon sign, uh, letting everybody know just how spiritual you are that you've been with the Lord. Folk will know. It will show in your attitude, in your demeanor. Friend, I'm telling you, the difference Christ brings is like a neon sign in your life. Y'all know my testimony. The first person that knew I was really born again was the dope dealer. Because I went to him as was my custom to pay him off, and he didn't see me come there buy no more dope. The video store guy. But y'all remember VHS? He would, you had to, you had to, you had to get, if you knew somebody, they'd hold one for you. Amen? The new release, they'd hold it for you until you got there. Well, I, I show up there and I'm like, I'm not interested in that tonight. Do you have anything Christian? So how kind Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments and I took it home. And I hadn't even seen that before, but I was looking at it differently this time. Me and Samantha, when we first got born again, we have a friend who uh, raised uh, was, was a preacher's kid, and, 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 and she testified to my wife one time. She said, "I can't be sure, but I think perhaps y'all are the first person, y'all are the first people that raised in church. Now, the first people that I ever knew who I was clear was really sure they gotten saved. They gotten saved. Why? Because of the change. It wasn't just. It wasn't just now. I was." Happier. Yeah, I was happier. It wasn't just now I stopped cussing. Oh, by the way, I had stopped cussing. It wasn't just now I wasn't smoking, drinking, and doing all those things. But I had to stop doing most of those things. Tommy had changed. Samantha had changed. People will take knowledge, just like here in the book of Acts, that you've been with Jesus. Verse 18 says, uh, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. But For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. <laughs> Go, Peter! <laughs> Go, Peter! I mean, just a few weeks earlier, he's, he's cowering down. I don't know the man. Now he's standing on the same street to the same people. Hey, we can't help it. We can't help it. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. How many understand that's the truth? The very things you're going to be talking about is, is, is going to be closely re related to what you've been looking at, what you've been listening to. That's the truth. John and Peter have been looking and listening to Jesus, amen. What about you? What, what have you been looking and, and listening to lately? What have you seen and heard since you started walking with Jesus? What about lately? What about lately? As you allow Him to work in your life, you'll have something to say. Y'all know me, every once in a while I just have to tear into a little, what's His name? Oh, this day in the night. <laughs> you know, you've been so good to me. Uh, <laughs> made me want to shout. Yeah, yeah. Because He's been good to me. Amen. Now wait a minute. 
said it. I said, you've been so good. I mean, it just gets on me sometimes. What's changing you? If you let him work in your life the way he wants to, you'll be talking about him all the time. Yeah, y'all know those people. Y'all know those people you get around, Miss Ruth, and it ain't long in the conversation, no matter what it was about, now it's about Jesus. Y'all know these people. I hope that you are one of these people. You could be talking about the groceries. You could be talking about the bills. But before that conversation ends, you're talking about Jesus with these people every time you get up with them. Somebody said, yeah, that's why I avoid talking to them. That's why I avoid them in Walmart. <laughs> Hello? I mean, it's like a grandma with a grandbaby. Huh, Kathy? You let grandma, you ask grandma about grandbaby, and 30 minutes later, she may wrap it up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You ask Samantha about her grandchildren. I mean, Samantha sit there and look at their picture and talk to it on the telephone. Just talk to the cell phone to a picture of her grandchildren. It's the funniest thing. Who are you talking to? Them. <laughs> Have you been with Jesus? Church, the same Peter who denied the Lord, now standing eyeball to eyeball with the chief priest. Huh? With the head honcho, amen? Not only that, I mean, he's keeping on preaching Jesus. He's keeping on with himself. And so much that Acts chapter 5, verse 28, uh, or verse 18 says, They laid their hands on him, throwed him in jail, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. Glory to God. They're, they're, they're preaching Jesus. They're, he's been delivered by angels, amen? Talk about an attitude change. Look at verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest saying, Did we not command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Notice, they were doing miracles. They didn't mention the miracles, John. They just said, you're teaching. That's how the left... Did I say left? I didn't mean to say left. That's how some people will do. They'll tell you some parts, but they won't tell you the whole picture. <laughs> You feel Jerusalem with your doctrine and intended to bring this man's blood on us. Verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Oh, you go. You go, Peter. You talk about an attitude change. I don't know him. We don't care what you say. We're following Jesus. They've been with Jesus. I'm telling you, the world can tell whether or not you've been with Jesus. By the words you say. By the things you do. And let me say this. And by the attitude by which you do it all. People can tell if you've been around Jesus. Acts chapter 3 verse 12. Men of Israel, don't look at us like we by our own power or holiness made this man to walk. It was Jesus. Now that's a lot different than the attitude some people have when God uses them. Peter and John said, look, it wasn't us, it was the Lord. Some people the Lord uses and they think it's all about them. And that may be why the Lord don't use them so often. Friend, when you spend time with God, you don't have to announce it. It will announce itself. Your face will show it. Glory to God. You'll be like Moses, just the glory of God shining off your, uh, off your face. Your life will reflect it. Your attitude, your speech, you'll sound like Jesus. Acts chapter 11, the Bible says that it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Christians means little Christ. In other words, it was there that they said, you act just like Jesus. You sound just like Jesus. You, 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 you conduct yourself just like Jesus. Christians. That's what we'll call you. See, it ain't the church that you go to that makes you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is being like Jesus. I said, what makes you a Christian is being like Jesus. Can people tell you've been with Him? Will they be able to tell when you go to lunch today that you've been to church besides looking at the clothes you're wearing? Will they be able to tell by the way you treat them, by the way you talk to your family around you, by the, by the conversations they about your waiter overhears when he walks, would they be able to tell that, well, these are believers right here? Or will the only indicator be that the bulletin so you can get your 10% off? Other than that, they never would have guessed it. Is there a Christ-likeness about you? 
Can people sense the love of the Lord in your life? The compassion, the, the humility even. Has there been a change because you've been with Him? Old things passed away, all things become new. Are the things that are important to Jesus important to you? Are the things that He loves, do you love? 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Friend, I'm telling you, every day, every time you look into this Word, amen, every time you spend time with God, fellowship, and it's making you more, it's, it's supposed to make you more like Him, amen. You can't help but be changed to be more like Christ, amen. Scripture is clear to me, it's clear to me that, 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 that you don't have to change your life in order to get saved. But if you get saved, you're going to change. Some things are going to change. Okay? Jesus has come just as you are. But He don't want you to leave just as you were. He wants you to have been changed. Folk used to talk about having um, conversion experiences. Anybody ever heard that phrase? I know you have. We had a, let me tell you about my conversion experience. In other words, they point to a time when something changed in their life. Okay? A conversion experience, I like that. Meaning they got saved and something changed. There was a conversion. Friend, did anything happen to you when you accepted Jesus? I know sometimes, sometimes it just seems like the right thing to do. A good thing to do even. Or you get scared because the preacher was talking about hell and it seemed like a smart thing to do. But really, nothing's changed at all in your life. Not your lifestyles, not your habits, not your way of thinking, not your heart. Not really anything. Not your mouth. Basically, still the same as before. No kind of conversion really at all. Church, that's not the way it's supposed to be. When we accept Jesus Christ into our life as Lord and Savior, there ought to be a change that's evident to all. Think about your life. What people look, when people look at you, what do they see? Do they see a lukewarm, half-professing Christian who says some of the right things sometimes and does some of the right things a lot of times? Or do they see something different? Do they see somebody what we would call on fire for the Lord? And that's just a relative term because uh, being on fire for the Lord should be just normal Christianity. <laughs> what we would call radical, that should just be somebody talking about Jesus at the restaurant or in the Walmart. Or, uh, uh, that should just be normal Christianity. We treat it like it's radical. Like them people that stop, step off the edge of the world when they're talking about Jesus, you know, uh, on the school bus. Well, that should just be normal Christianity. Normal Christian behavior. When they look at you, do they see someone who's been with Jesus? Let me say this. If you have not been spending time with Jesus, don't expect people to see Him in you. When you have been spending time with Jesus, they'll know it. And when you haven't been, they'll know that too. There's a difference in the attitude, the mannerisms, the words, the actions of people who spend time in the presence of the Lord, who spend time with the Lord. I, I understand that today. Uh, I, I'm sure most everybody in here would say, well, you know, I want my life to count as far as my, my, my walk with the Lord. I, I want to be a part of God's plan. I want to be in His will for my life. Uh, I, want to be, I want Jesus to be reflected in my life. Friend, there's only one way that's going to happen. And that's by you spending time, you being with Jesus. That's the only way it's going to happen. It's not going to happen because you want it, and you wish it, and you would like it. It's going to happen because you do it. Spending time with the Lord. Then the power of the Holy Ghost will manifest in your life. Then the, the leading of the Holy Spirit will show in your life. Glory to God. As you spend time with Him. Folk will know it. You won't have to advertise it. You won't have to tell people, look, no, no, no I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual this, that, and the other. You won't have to tell nobody nothing. It'll be evident. Man, there's something different about that person. Oh, I can't put my finger on it. What is it? And if somebody has to tell them, and they find out, they'll say, oh, that's exactly what it is. 
I've been with Jesus. I've been with Jesus. If you spend most of your time watching TV, well then, that's what's going to come out in your life. Your favorite TV shows. Or if you spend most of your time watching sports, well then, you know, that's what you'll talk about. That's what you'll do. If you spend most of your time on social media, well then, well then everybody will know it because they're on it too. Whatever you spend your time doing, fun, work, resources, whatever it is that you do, that's what will be seen in your life. Have you spent any time with the Lord lately? Is Jesus what people see when they see you? I think today is a great day just to do a checkup, uh, see how much Christ is uh, reflected in, in your life. I mean, it's a great day to let the Holy Spirit just speak to our heart, amen, change our life. If, if we would truly spend time with the Lord, amen, the power of the Holy Spirit that, that you yearn to be in operation in your life would, would be in operation. It would manifest itself. The love of Christ that you long to walk in, would you would walk in it. You would walk in it, amen. That's the impression that I want to leave on people. And I'm sure you also. I mean, you're always leaving an impression on, on somebody. Everything we do is leaving an impression uh, one way or the other, whether good or bad or spiritual or not spiritual. It's like the guy who was backing out of the parking lot and he scraped the car next to him and he got out and he looked and when he looked he noticed that people were looking at him. And so he went back to his car, grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and, and he wrote down, the people watching thinking I'm, think I'm writing you a note leaving my name and number. I'm not. And stuck it under the windshield. I mean, do you act a certain way just because you think somebody's looking? Oh me or oh my? What kind of impression are you leaving? What do people you come into contact with think about you? You might say, well, I could give a care less what people think about me. You need to care. You need to care. As a child of God, uh, as a representative of, of, of the Lord, you need to care as a Christian, amen? You represent the one who shed His blood on your behalf. The one who so loved the world that He gave Jesus that anybody who wants to get in on it can get in on it if they believe. You ought to care. You better care. There's folk in Foley, Alabama that need you to care. Amen. There's folk on your street. There's probably folk in your house that need you to care. Need you to care how you act or how you look uh, to others. I'm going to tell you straight, the first people, the first people that are, that, that, that are realize whether you've been or whether you've not been with Jesus is the ones who live under your roof. And is that the husband you want? Or is that the wife you want? Or is that what you want your children to be? Or is that the young men and young women you want to reproduce when they get older? Someone like you? You may, you may be here today and say, that's exactly how I'd like my kids to be. Or you may be here today and say, you know, there's a few things I would like them not to pick up on that's like me. I've got a list of things that I'm like that I do not want my children to be like. If I was being real here this morning. But hey, my children are, have been with me. And that's how they're going to act. You know, as much as I like to claim all the good things that my kids do, they're smart. That's my wife. That's that Tommy. It's all from him. They're smart. They're handsome. They're this, that, and the other. They're good looking children. They, they excel. They do all that. And then I just smile and smile. And I'm like, yes, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Like my daughter, I brag on her. She went and she made a, she, she made, made a, yeah, just did something incredible for a, a 20 year old to do uh, just a week or two ago. And the person looked at me and said, that's just a reflection of you. And I said, yes. <laughs> Even though it wasn't. Really. Because what she did, I've never done today. But when they said that, I said, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but as much as I like to take all that when, when they're lifting my children up and this, that, and the other, when my kids talk back, when my kids are smart alecks, not my lovely daughters, my sons, my daughters who've never done anything wrong. Can't you tell just by looking at them? <laughs> 
Guess where they learn most of that too? You're exactly right. Their mother. <laughs> no. <laughs> A lot of that came from me too. Why? Because they've been with me. They've been with me. Let me tell you something what your kids will do. Where you leave off, they'll springboard from. Good or bad. Good or bad. Where you plateau, that's where they start. That's where they, that's where they launch off from. This works good or bad. Have you been with Jesus? Is it evident that Jesus is important to you? Would, would, would people be able to take knowledge? Remember what I said? They, when they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned men, they took knowledge. Oh, they've been with Jesus. That explains it. That explains it. What previously was unexplainable. Y'all stand up with me. Amen. Glory to God. I would like to say this morning, as we've had church and opened the Word of God and, and praise and worship, I'd like to say this morning that we've been with Jesus. Amen. That we've been with Jesus. That He's that He that His Word was shared. That His Spirit spoke to our heart. That today, that you know what God, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, He's moving in our lives. And you know we see some things that that perhaps we need to adjust in our life. That so we see some things perhaps that we want to change. You know, not, maybe not. Uh, but you might be here, and, and 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 maybe the motivation to change is your children. I mean, that's not a bad motivation to have. You know. I wouldn't put it all over there. I, I, would, I, would, I would think that you might need to change for yourself too. But um, whatever your motivation be, you see the need for change. Don't harden your heart this morning. Receive. Having been with Jesus, folk are never the same afterwards. Oh, they may eventually, like the Bible says, return to their vomit or their pigsty. But they don't start off that way. And that's not God's intent. Y'all hear me? He wants you to change. He wants you to see yourself as like looking in a mirror. And then He wants that mirror of the Word. He wants to see what you're capable of being in Him. What your life could be like if you trust Him. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we do trust You today. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank You today that great change will take place. Now, Lord God, I thank you for the fact that, that, that knowing that we've been with, you, been with Jesus today, that, that there will be great change, that we'll be better fathers, we'll, be, uh, we'll have better mothers, we'll, we'll be better spouses, we'll be better friends. All those things, Lord God. Uh, maybe, maybe, we, maybe we had plans, uh, maybe, we had, maybe we had intentions, uh, uh, even, even this week, uh, uh, but Lord, you spoke to us, and you spoke to our heart, and, and Lord, I don't want to be that, I want to be what you created me to be. I love you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're here today and you're not born again, there's a change available to you. Change everything. There's a destination that God wants you to arrive at that you're not going to go any other way. There's a life, an abundant life that God has for you that you're not going to get any other way. There's a joy, there's a peace. I can go on and on that God has for you that only comes one way. And it starts by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and I can pray with you, I can pray uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the sinner's prayer, whatever you want to call it. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If I can assist you in that today, well then that's why we have church. Don't leave here today. If God's speaking to your heart, don't leave here today without... Let God continue to speak to your heart oh, without letting that change be involved. Amen? If you're here and you just need prayer for any other matter, we believe today uh, in this church that, that God can touch your physical body. We believe that God's a healer. Amen? We believe that, uh, that next to getting born again, the next thing that God would have for you is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We can lay hands on you today and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? Just like Peter and John in the, in the book of Acts we were reading about. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Walking in great boldness. That could be you today. Amen. That's available today if you like that. If you if you could if you if you are willing to receive that.
Amen? Amen. Glory to God. We're going to dismiss the service. We're going to close. We're going to profess a good confession. Amen? And we're going to love on somebody before we leave. And we're going to expect. Amen? I'm telling you, people are watching you. People are watching you. Amen? They might not know. They might not know where you've been. But I'm telling you, you leave this place after having been with Jesus, it'll be evident to them. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Confess this with me. I'm strong in the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. I am blessed and healed by the stripes of Jesus. I have the greater one living in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a child of God. You know, when we confess this, let me tell you what we're doing. Remember what Wigglesworth said? He said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. You know what the Word of God does? It's a seed, the Bible says. You plant it in your heart. You plant it on the inside, and it grows. It grows until you can believe that you are more than a conqueror. Till you can believe that you're blessed and that you're healed. Till you can believe that the greater one lives on you. It's growing. It's growing. And for you to believe that, it's going to have, you're going to have to expand. The, more than what this little, what these physical limitations will hold you to. Can y'all understand that? So every time we confess, we're growing. Every time we believe, we're growing. We're growing. Amen? Amen. 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 Why don't you tell somebody that you love them today before you leave? Tell them you're glad to see them, make them feel welcome. Amen. If I can pray with you, come.